It's a fantastic little story. It has lasted all these years. I heard it from the main source, and that was my father, who in the story is Lucky Sutton, or Elmer Sutton. My dad and his wife, Vera, had come in. They had worked with the carnival for years. And um, Billy Ray, which was my dad's friend at the time, and his wife, June, they were all together. They decided to come in for the weekend. He wanted to come home, see his mom and, you know, his brothers and catch up and to see how things were going. And the night this occurred, they were all in the house, um, and there was 11 of them in the house. As the light began to fade, Billy Ray stepped outside to draw water from the well. He saw something shaped like a saucer streak through the sky, trailing a rainbow of color behind it. It settled down in the woods behind the house. When Lucky Sutton came out to check on his friend's seemingly outrageous claim, the two men saw something emerge from the woods. Coming toward them was a glowing, three-foot-tall silver beam. Its arms were raised over its head, and it was floating. Unnerved and frightened for their families, the two men ran indoors. At first, their families wouldn't believe them until Lucky's mother, Glenny, saw it at the back door of the house. Well, that was it. The fight was on. And so they started shooting, and they, they had a battle from the time it started till about 11, 11.30 that night until they finally got a clearing where they could run to Hopkinsville and get help. They had no phone, so that was the only thing they knew to do. By the time the night was over, you had police officers, you had reporters, you had people from Fort Campbell all out there traipsing around the land trying to figure out, you know, what happened that night, and they couldn't find anything. The only thing they could find was shotgun shells, of course, hoses, screens in the windows, woodwork shot off, and but no bodies. They were coming from everywhere. Magazines were coming out. Um, that night it happened, Kentucky New Era came out. They sent a reporter out then with cameras and everything. People were camping out in their yard waiting for them to come back. People were walking through their house and taking things as souvenirs, and it got really, really bad. My grandmother was a church-going woman that read her Bible, that prayed, that made sure the kids went to church. And her credibility alone with all this was enough to make people believe something had happened at night. And that, just don't think it can happen to one little family out in the country. It can happen to anybody. There is possibly things out here that we don't know, that we can't explain.